Hey, what is up, everybody? Welcome inside the Guilty as Charged podcast, coming to you live for a very special episode on a Friday evening. Hopefully, you're going to have a uh, wonderful weekend during Labor Day. College football is back. Uh, NFL about to hit full swing. And uh, very honored today to have Mr. Braden Fajoko, Chargers defensive tackle, back on the show for his second appearance. Braden, thanks for taking the time to join us tonight. How are you doing? Good, man. Steve Tyler, good to see you guys, man. Good to good to be back with the guys, chatting it up, man, and and just kind of letting everybody know what's been happening on my side of things. Yes, cannot uh, wait. We're going to have, uh, just so everybody in the live chat knows, we're going to do about 20 minutes. Tyler and I are going to have some uh, specific topics we have for Braden, and then we'll uh, open it up for uh, some questions in the chat. So if you do have a question uh, for Braden, just kind of wait for a little bit. Uh, make sure we get your question answered later on in the show. As always, the uh, super chat feature is always appreciated and encouraged. Uh, Tyler's here as well, man. Tyler, how are you doing tonight? Doing very well. Before you get to the football topics, I do want to jump ahead of you and ask a question before you get to the football stuff. Braden, in July, you got engaged, man. How did that go? How did that go down? Oh, okay. Getting to the meaty stuff, man. Um... <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> No, we lost him. Brayden, no. Wow. You're back. You're gone. Am I here? Oh, wait. You are very... Can you speak? We lost you. He's back. Am I here? Am I here? Yeah, you, you were there gone, we go. and now you're back, and now you're gone, and now you're back. It's been like your whole career so far. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> That's hilarious. No, uh, no, that's 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 probably the funniest thing I've heard all week. Um, <laughs> it's been good, man. You know, just um, a little stressful because I, I saw like the wedding proposal um, and I kind of saw the amount of how much a wedding costs. And I didn't know weddings were that expensive. And uh, I kind of joked with my fiance. I was like, you know what, let's just head to a courthouse next week. And, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> we get this thing wrapped up. But it's been good, man. It's um that's kind of been like the biggest news so far of the year um probably one of my biggest accomplishments so far in my lifetime um probably bigger than winning the national championship so uh appreciate you for asking that tyler it was good man uh, i'm excited to you know tie that knot officially next year love it love it congrats man appreciate it brother i uh i definitely remember having that same conversation uh about the courthouse with my <laughs> wife and <laughs> um, you know, we did, we had two receptions. We did a reception in Utah and a reception here in, in Fresno, California. So, uh, you can imagine how pricey that was. Yeah. <laughs> I already know, bro. I already know. Is Kyle Van Noy going to DJ your wedding? <laughs> Kyle, Kyle Van Noy needs to stay as far as away he can from my wedding. <laughs> He's a, we, we were talking about the venues and, you know, it's going to be in Maui and, and he was like, oh, you know, I've. I'm, I live in Maui, bro. I, you know, I already know all that place. He's like, bro, I'm there all the time. I'm like, yo, this man's wild. And I haven't even sent out save the dates yet. <laughs> He's already invited himself to the wedding. And you're like, Kyle, we don't know you like that yet. We, For sure. We're not on that level yet. For sure. Um, For sure. All right. Well, uh, uh, let's get to some football stuff. I think, um, you know, you had a, a great press conference the other day, you know, after you had, uh, you know, officially made the final 53-man roster, which big congrats, by the way. Um, I don't want to necessarily revisit the feeling of like making the roster. Cause you, like I said, you already did that. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm curious your thoughts. Cause you've been through this obviously three times now. What is the last week of training camp? If you will like for a player like you, you know, undrafted free agent, um, you know, like, you've been through this three times now, like I said, because mm -hmm. I, I know players like you, you're so focused on the preseason games. You're so focused on mm -hmm. training camp. What is that moment? Or what is that weekend like after that final preseason game? You know, you don't get me wrong. It's super stressful. Um, anybody that says it's, oh, man, you know, you got to relax and you got to this and this, like, trust me, it's, it's probably one of the most nerve wracking things because, um, you know, you you hug in the locker room. It's, it's kind of like the season's over, right? You know, after the last mm. preseason game, everybody's hugging each other. Um, you know, everybody's just like, man, pleasure to play with you because nobody knows what's going to happen. You know, after those two cut days and you get the roster down to 53, um, you never know it's going to be a new room. And so 
um, those two days where you have that day off after the game, um, you're kind of getting your body right. And then you go back up the next day um, for a workout. And so we had workouts on, um, we had a game Friday, we had Saturday off, and then we had a Sunday, Monday workout. And then Tuesday was the last day of cuts. So we go up there on Sunday and, um, uh, you know, it's a full team workout. Everybody's there. Um, you know, you kind of, it's a, like a flush workout recovery ish. And then Monday comes around and then, you know, it's, it's always nerve wracking because, um, you see guys, you know, plastic bags and, and guys are cleaning out their lockers and, and it's always sad when you have, you know, locker mates next to you and you guys have developed a relationship, but you understand that's the, that's the beast of the game, man. You know, it's the nature of how things work in this, in this job field. And, um, it's always nerve wracking, but you always got to remind yourself that, you know, it's always bigger than football. It's, it's the relationships you build. It's the friendships. And, you know, ultimately it's, it's the work you put in and you got to remember that it's the same game you've been playing as a kid and, you know, whatever happens, wherever the chips lie, and that's all you can do. You know, you only can control what you can control and let everything else happen, how it's going to be. I know last year, it was basically right at the final moment you got mm -hmm. cut or you were aware that you got cut. Yeah. When did you finally figure out this year that you were sticking around? Well, so we're on Pacific time and, and mm -hmm. you know, every day the transactions have to go in by, I think one o'clock or at the four o'clock Eastern time or something like that. Um, and so you're, you're kind of just, or one o'clock Eastern time, I think it was last week, if I'm not mistaken, um, whatever it is, you know, you're, you're kind of just waiting around and then, you know, you, we always have a team meeting, so they always send a schedule out, um, you know, to everybody, regardless if you've been cut yet or if you haven't been cut and you don't know that uh, going into it. And so you have a team meeting and the, you know, the team meeting's at 11 and and usually they kind of get everything done by, I want to say at least 10, 10 o'clock-ish um, Pacific time because, you know, we're on the West Coast. And, um, you know, I kind of went about my business in the morning. I, I set an alarm for like nine o'clock. I was like, I'm going to sleep in, you know, we don't have a, a team meeting till 11. So I was like, you know, enjoy the sleep, um, you know, rest up a little bit, you know, still trying to recover from the Saints game. And then that next morning, I'm just, I woke up at six 30, you know, PTSD from, from two years prior, man, you <laughs> <Yeah>. know, <laughs> you're waking up and it's like the opposite of draft day, you know, when draft mm -hmm. day rolls around, you're hoping for a call, you know, mm -hmm. you're sitting there, you're like, man, let's go let this phone ring. Let's get this thing going. And then, you know, on cut day, you're like, please, nobody call my phone. <laughs> you know, stay away from it. Don't call it. And then, you know, the 10 o'clock hour rolls around and, and you kind of see like the final cuts go on. And, and mm -hmm. you know, you kind of um, get a clue like, OK, you know, I, I think I've made it. And then, you know, you carry on with work that day and you, and you go into the meetings and you just go on from there. That is just wild. You know, we um... – we had a conversation with Jamari actually earlier mm. in the year and just kind of talking about what draft day is like if you're mm. not like a first round pick, if you're not a second round pick. And just that weight and that stress, I think, is is something that, you know, us casual fans who have never been into, you know, into that kind of setting just don't really understand the mindset and, and how much that can affect you as a player while you're going through those kind of events. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it's. The tough part about it is, is when you're sitting around those two days uh, during cut days, you're always thinking to yourself, like, did I do enough? You know, and and as an athlete and as a competitor, I start watching film in preseason every game. You know, during those two days, I watched every game, and and I was like, man, this is such a bad play. You know, I'm telling myself, like, man, they might cut me off of this play, or you know what, man, like, what am I doing here, bro? Like, Brad, you got to be better, man. You can't put this, you know, and. And you start getting so hard on yourself, and, and that's the mental aspect a lot of people don't see is, is while you're waiting in your hotel room those two days, man, nobody beats themselves harder than a than an athlete and a, and a true competitor because you're always looking at, mm -hmm. I think, the bad side of things because you're always going to be your worst critique, uh, critic, excuse me, and you're always going to critique yourself on, on like the nitpickiest things out there, especially as a football player. You know, all oh, my hands aren't right here. You know, my alignment's too loose or I'm too tight on the guy or, you know, just things of that nature. And, and that's how, like, the mental aspect of the game changes so much. And especially for a bubble or fringe guy like myself, you know, those two days can be really stressful behind closed doors. In general, because, again, we're fans and no chance in hell I'm stepping onto a field unless I'm streaking across it. <laughs> what kind of... <laughs> 
Sorry, Stephen. Uh, <laughs> crap. <laughs> Everyone says, oh, training camp doesn't matter. I got to show it in the preseason. Mm. Or someone says, oh, preseason doesn't matter. Whatever. Yeah. What do the coaches, or maybe even just the Chargers, do you think there's, do they take something into consideration a bit more? Is it the practice stuff against your own guys? Is it mm. more the preseason? Like, what should we be keying on? As fans, like, what should we put stock into? Because, you know, we watch days and days and days and days and days mm-hmm. of you killing it in training camp every day. There was a play mm-hmm. at least that we could see, you know, 20 yards away. But, like, does that matter as much as these preseason games? Is there one that matters more or less? You know, for for a player like myself who's, you know, always kind of been on the back end of things, looking in and, and fighting for a spot, everything matters. Um, and then when you're at my point in in, in – when you're at this point in my career, you not only have to do it in practice, now you have to go do it in games, you know, because now you have a feeling of, okay, this is what an NFL practice tempo is like. This is the speed of the game. And then they ultimately want to see you execute, you know, just the basic fundamentals of what you're doing in the game. Um, it's always good to show out in practice, you know, because it, it, it kind of gives the players, your teammates, the little coaches – um, comfort and a little more confidence is if, in what you can do as a player. And I think it solidifies it a bit more when you can do it in a game setting. And then ultimately, it's all about matchups, right? You know, you go on practice, and I think it really helps out a lot that we have a really good offensive line. Mm-hmm. So you can kind of gauge, especially in my position, how you measure up against them, um, whether you're with the ones, whether you're with the twos, or whether you're running with the threes as a defensive lineman. That's kind of the measuring stick I felt like when I came into camp was how do I perform against the ones, right? Mm. Am I going to do what I did against the twos and threes against the ones? Am I going to continue to be consistent? Am I going to continue to play the blocks right? Am I going to continue to execute my calls? Or is it going to be, you know, break and play with the twos and threes? Eh, He's kind of just so-and-so with the ones. So that was my biggest thing coming in was just being consistent, you know, whether it was practicing against, you know, our guys for 16, 17 practices Mm -hmm. or practicing against the Cowboys and playing three preseason games. There we go. And, and like uh, we see in the chat right now, you know, I thought you were, you had some great moments in, in uh, Mm -hmm. against the ones, especially from what I was able to see against the Cowboys. But I want to talk about, this defensive tackle room, because obviously there was a lot of moving parts. There was a lot of holdover from 2020 into 2021. Mm-hmm. This year, obviously, you guys uh, bring in Vash, you bring in Foxy, um, and of course, you draft Otito and Austin mm-hmm. and signing Austin Johnson as well. Um, and you talked about this in your press conference. And Sony Michelle brought up the other day that there's a certain standard with mm-hmm. your performance and whether that's in practice, whether that's working out. How, you've been here for three years now. How have you seen that standard kind of change over your three years, in particular with the defensive line room? Man, that's a that's a great question. Um, it's helped in my position that we've had made men. I, I like using the term the term made men. I got it from Jay Rogers. He he loves using the term made men. Um, we have made men in our room, um, and I've had it since I've been a rookie. You know, from Linval Joseph. Um, you know, being a guy that I've kind of had to take the back seat to and, and learn from as a mentor. Um, and then now you have Sebastian and Austin, who are two other made men in this league. Getting to learn from them, um, getting to see what the standard looks like, how you say, Steve, you know, how Sony was talking about. There's a way these guys approach their craft every day. And you never have to, as a player like myself, as a younger player, you never have to try and look no further than, you know, the guys in your room whenever you have bets like that because, you know, they're going to show you the way and they're going to show you by example. They're not just going to talk about it. You know, when I see Bash out there every day grinding against Corey and and they're going at it every day and I see, you know, Austin against Big Matt, like there's no other, what's the word I'm looking for, motivation you need as a younger guy than being like, you know what, that's what the standard looks like. You know, a coach shouldn't have to point it out to you in meetings and say, this is what you should be doing. I need you to be doing this. You see the older guys in your room, you tend to start picking your, you know, your behind up and and start playing up to those standards. So it's been super easy, man. Just, just learning from great role models and veterans, you know, since my rookie year. Yeah. I love that term made men and and the way you used it to describe someone like Khalil Mack, who was volunteering Mm -hmm. to practice against Mm -hmm. the the twos and the threes or whatever. 
other changes that happened that at least we can see is obviously Jay Rogers switching back over. And then you guys keeping six defensive tackles this year. That was different. I don't know if that was different in 2020, but or yeah, but it was different last year, obviously. Now you're carrying six. What went into, I don't know how much you can share, the switch to Jay Rogers moving to the interior and then you guys keeping six? Like what could fans expect maybe to be different because of that? Um, you know, I, I personally don't know uh, the personnel decisions or, or the reasons behind, you know, the numbers and, and you know, how much D-line we keep or, you know, other positions elsewhere. But what I can say is is the way we play defensive line is is fast, it's physical, it's violent. And so um, you're going to need bodies and you're going to need depth. Um, I think last year, witnessing it firsthand late into the season, how injuries affected us, how COVID affected us. Um, and how physical it can get in the trenches injury wise. I think you need bodies. Um, I think you need guys that are always prepared to go at any given time. And which is ultimately how I got my shot last year, you know, was through, you know, a couple guys getting hurt, uh, bumps and bruises along the way. And then all of a sudden it's all right, Braden, you know, you're getting signed up and, and you're starting against the Pittsburgh Steelers this week. And, you know, having Jay this year um, has been phenomenal. Uh, it's been refinery um, on my technique, if that makes sense, in, in a way. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Jay and Coach Staley, they've, you know, they've been together for a while now since the Chicago days, and, and Jay's been coaching in this defense since his early days in Denver, you know, with Vic and mm -hmm. all those guys. And I think there's a much better technical understanding of how Coach Staley and 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 Coach Hill wants the D line to play, um, and I think it's been uh, a great learning curve for me, um, just polishing up on my techniques. And then you go get guys like Austin, Sebastian, uh, Morgan, guys who have experience playing in this defense. Uh, it's helping me a lot as a young player because, you know, I'm the type of guy that I'm always going to have to adapt and adjust to you know whatever coaches want, whatever the defense is at hand or or whatever techniques, you know, uh, a coach or, or a certain head coach or defensive coordinator wants me to play. Um, but having those guys in the room, having Jay, you know, with the D-line this year, um, it's helped out a lot my game uh, just multiple, multiple times. There we go. I'd love to hear that. And, you know, it's just such great insight into what kind of goes on in, in a specific room. So as, as Tyler said, we'll have a couple more questions here. Uh, mm -hmm. If you do have a, a question in the chat right now, feel free to type it in. Uh, and we'll uh, be sure to get to it. Of course, I have to give a, sh a quick shout out to uh, Tyler's dad, who gave a, a super chat earlier in the chat. So appreciate that. Um, Brady, I want to talk uh, about just kind of roles and things like that, because, yeah. you know, I think we can kind of look at the way that, you know, you guys have used the, the nickel front uh, a lot in training camp and, and obviously the, yeah. the kind of um, odd fronts from last year with the three, four defense. How much can you guys move around on this defense? You know, I, I look at a guy like Sebastian in particular, who uh, with the Rams before he got hurt was kind of playing three tech, four tech, one tech. Yeah. Um, you've done that a little bit as well. So is Morgan. Morgan's moved all the way out to, you know, five, six tech. Um, how much are you guys expecting to kind of move around uh, in, you know, as opposed to like how it was kind of more rigid with, uh, you know, Gus and, and his defense? Yeah, you know, that's a great question. You know, you, you never really know um, how much moving parts will go into a week, you know, because you never know how a game's going to turn out. Um, things happen on the go during a game. You know, a guy may catch a cramp, may be out of series, and a guy may have to bump down the nose or a guy may have to bump out the end. Um, and I think that's been a, a great, great thing that not only Jay, but Giff, Coach Hill, and Staley – have all emphasized is having versatility amongst the front guys. Um, you know, we're in it every day with the defensive line and, you know, we're doing walkthroughs with Jay and Giff and, and, you know, every guy has to learn every position, not saying I'm going to go take edge reps for Joey. And Khalil, <laughs> but, um, I need to see that though, man. Just like, give me a couple <laughs> reps. Linval, Linval, had a, Linval had a couple edge rusher reps he in did. 2020. I remember. He did. Uh, he did. So I, I'm a big fan of, of getting those big guys out on the edges. Let me say that. 
He did. He did have a couple five tech rushes. Um, but no, you know, every day in walkthrough, it's always, you know, this guy go here, this guy go here, you know, walk through, we're walking through plays, you know, blitzes, stunts, um, you know, rush patterns, all these kind of things. And it's helped. It's helping, excuse me, because, you know, the coaches understand how big versatility is, in, you know, in this day and age. And, you know, like I said earlier, things happen on the fly. And so I know for our room, uh, you have to be versatile. You have to be, especially in my position, you know, I continuously have to learn every position, whether it's left end, whether it's nose tackle, whether it's right end. And you have to just be ready to execute at any given time. And I think that's the great thing about our room is, is all the guys in it can do it. You know, all the guys can play left to right, um, can play nose on any given down and take a double team. Uh, some guys' bodies are made for it. Uh, and some mm -hmm. guys is, you know, aren't, but, you know, I can honestly guarantee you that we're all trained to get the job done if we need to. And that just comes from great coaching. Tyler, did you have one other question or should we get into, uh, I, I was going to say we're, we're running a little over now, so we could jump into the super chats and the regular <laughs> questions. All right. So let's, uh, let's give Jesse the first shout out. He was the, uh, first super chat here. He says, Braden, have you listened to Kendrick's last album a second time? <laughs> and are you ready to admit he's the GOAT? We did have a couple other Ox question, Ox chord questions in there as well. But uh, thoughts on Kendrick Lamar's last album? Um, you know, when I listen to music, um, I have to be in the right mood. You know, I'm not going to turn on a Kendrick album right before I'm about to go out to practice. Um, you know, when I'm sitting in my apartment at night and I got some downtime and I'm turning on some film, I'll shuffle some Kendrick, and that's kind of when I get into it. Um, haven't really been dissecting it like I should be. Um, <laughs> I, I was just talking to one of my buddies today. He plays at Louisiana Tech, um, and we were talking about Drake's album. And uh, I, I talked to him, and I said, man, I've been listening to this thing on repeat for the past three days, mm -hmm. and I think it's it, it's it's a special album. Um, it got a lot of trash and hate and criticism, especially myself. I was one of those people. I'm a huge Drake fan. You know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Drake sure. connoisseur when it comes to music. Hmm. And, um, you know, like I said, when I dissect music, I got to be in the mood for it. And and I'll, I'll definitely give it another listen now that, you know, Jesse mentioned it. So in terms Jesse. of the uh, the aux chord, you know, obviously they did that video of favorite or who shouldn't have the aux. Who are the three best players to give the aux chord to on the Chargers? Oh, great question. Um, okay. I'll... I'll I'll start with, I'll put myself there uh, as as the first. Um, sure, you go. Always going to bet on myself. Number yeah. two, I'll probably give it to Josh Palmer. Um, okay. You, you know, Josh, we have a loud. Um, it's like a huge Sony speaker. It's like a five foot standing tall speaker. Mm -hmm. um, we have it in our locker room, and so Josh will always connect. Um, I think he has a good feel for the room because the wide receivers they're by the old linemen, and so. You know, sometimes Corey Lindsay's not feeling rap all the time, so you kind of you kind of got to watch out <laughs> really? for, the, for, for the for the for the head honcho there. Um, sure. You know, Cor Corey does listen to rap; he knows his rap really well. Uh, but you definitely have to uh, feel that side of the room because you know you don't want to piss those guys off. And then um, number three, I'd probably give it to Sebastian. Uh, we're in the weight room, so so Bash picks some good. You know, he he knows how to fill the room out. I mean, sometimes, you know, rap is not always the go-to in the music. So, you know, Bash puts on a little rave, a little Avicii, um, a little Kygo, and, and and we get it bumping in there a little bit. So uh, myself, Josh Palmer, and Sebastian, and on a row, I'd probably do Chris Rump. Oh, there you okay, go. nice. Uh, during the offseason, I got to interview uh, BYU defensive lineman Uriah Leatawa. don't know if you mm. happen to know yeah, each other. Yeah. But, okay, yeah. He well said pregame. Sure, yeah, I think I got it right. He says pregame, he sometimes will listen to love songs to pump himself up. Is that at yeah. all a thing in the wow. locker room? You know what? I, I'd be very interested to disconnect earphones um, in an NFL locker room and play <laughs> things out loud. Okay. Uh, because I'm pretty sure there's some guys in there that don't always listen to rap. And I'm pretty sure there's some guys there that have like Lizzo bumping or maybe some Doja Cat. <laughs> like I can... I can almost okay. guarantee it. Like, there, there's some, there's some, there's some Ooh. guys that you know they got their head bumping like this, but you know they got a little softy in them, and, and, and they're, <laughs> they're probably listening to some chick music. But it's all good, man. Whatever gets you ready to play a game, man. Yeah. Somebody on the team is probably listening to some like Taylor Swift or or something. No like. doubt. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. I, I I know Drew. 
So Drew's not a um, – he'll listen to a little bit of rap, but, you know, I'll catch Drew singing a little bit of uh, Kygo and, and a little bit of Avicii, you know, before the game. So I know there is some versatility in music when it comes to guys in the locker room pregame. There we go. There we go. Uh, Tyler's dad with another super chat here. He wants to know, is your family coming mm-hmm. to the season opener? And uh, kind of an extension, I guess. Uh, how many games should we expect to see uh, Papa Fajoko and uh, the rest <laughs> of the fam at this year? Yeah. So, um, you know, I know my brother, uh, my brother Sam will be coming out with his family. Um, mm-hmm. Won't be able to put a guarantee mark on if my mother and my father are coming. But I mean, whenever, you know, my father does come, he's the light of the show. Uh, I mean, he is – everybody asks about him more than me. And so I'm just like, yo, man, you know, Staley's – you know, he comes up to me before practice. He's like, bro, your dad's a viral sensation. You know, you need to pick it up. You know, I'm just like, you know, coach, I'm, I'm trying my best here. Um, but it, it's cool. Uh, I hope they can come out for as much games as they can. And uh, I, I just love to see – you know, all the fans interacting with them, you know, it keeps them young and it keeps them going. So uh, hopefully we can win a lot of games this year, you know, keep them coming to SoFi. Yeah, absolutely. Speaking of the opener from MAO Scott or Mouse Scott. Mm-hmm. Oh, Mouse. Okay. Uh, how much of a revenge mentality does the team have against the Raiders? Is that a legit thing heading to this year? Or do you guys kind of take the, mm-hmm. well, it's just another game approach. No, man. You know, so that's a really great question. Um, you know, this week in practice, you know, we had three practices and um, we had a padded practice this week. And, and I can honestly say that was probably one of the toughest padded practice I've been a part of since I've been here. Oh, okay. um, the reason why it, it was just because it was so competitive. Um, it was take this how you want it, but it was just a very physical day. You know, we had short yardage in there. Uh, we had first and second down in there. I mean, we had you know, we were blitzing the offense, how they were going to pick up our blitzes. Mm-hmm. And, man, it was chippy. It was tough. I mean, they, we, <laughs> we – it was crazy because, you know, the offensive line was firing off the ball. We're firing off the ball. You know, wide receivers are, are, are trying to, you know, lower their shoulder on, on, you know, the DBs. And, you know, Nas isn't going for any of that. He's lowering his shoulder trying to thump something. And, you know, Kyle yeah. Van Noy's talking trash. And, you know, he's like 35 years old. So whenever he talks <laughs> trash, <laughs> nobody takes him serious. But – it's 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 funny that you know you 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 see revenge mentality and um i don't think it's more so revenge i just think it's man we we just have a really good good bunch of guys that just want to play football and play good football Mm -hmm. um i said it in my press conference you know we we kind of watched a little bit of that that raiders game last year and we looked at how much more improvements we've made as a team Mm -hmm you know, just this off season. And it all started from OTAs. It all starts from the coaching. It all starts from 90% of our guys showing up throughout OTAs. Nearly 100% of of the team was here. And that just goes to show that, you know, you have everybody buying in. You know, it doesn't need to even be a revenge game when you know you have guys that are just willing to buy in and play football. Um, And so I think, you know, with with, we're not where we want to be yet. You know, we still have a whole week left to prepare for the Raiders. and I know by Sunday the coaches will have the best game plan for us. And, and you know, I know the offensive guys and the rest of the defensive guys, especially the guys, will be ready to go come kick off. Yeah, I know uh, Sebastian in his press conference said that he well, he was making one of the tight ends a little mad in that uh, padded practice. So yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. love to hear that. Bash is petty, man. When, when we practice, he's he's petty. Um, and you know, like it's one of those things where it's like you know, when Bash starts to get into it with somebody, you got to go, ca- you got to go catch back up. You know, you can't. <laughs> you can't and it's I, – I tell Tito, too, it's like – because, you know, we're the young guys in the room. And so, like, I tell Tito, I'm like, bro, if, if anything goes down, you know, we got to be the first ones there. And he's like, I know, I know, I know. And, like, we're over there trying to get water because we're tired. And Bash is – you know, you see Bash and Eck talking smack to each other. Oh, Bash okay. just hit Eck. And then, you know, Eck's trying to lower his shoulder on a linebacker. And so um, – but it's all good, fun, and competition, man. It's, it's, it's really cool to see how far our team has come, um, especially myself being here for the last three years. It's cool to see the – what's the word I'm looking for? It's cool to see the um, – I guess the 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 whole notion of, of how far we've come as a team. Um, you know, such a, such a different mindset from, you know, where we were my rookie year up until now. 
And, you know, that just comes from the top down. It comes from good leadership, um, mm -hmm. you know, good coaches, good teammates. And, and you know, ultimately we see how far, how far we go this year. Yeah, practices were a lot more chippy this year, it seemed. Was mm -hmm. that just all good competition? And what, what was kind of different between this year and last year? Yeah, it's just that's it, man. Just good competition. Um, you know, guys are trying to make each other better. And, you know, it all starts from the trenches. You know, we go against each other every day. And, you know, the whole line, they're, you know, they're going to shove. They're going to push and shove. And, and you know, Bash, Austin, um, you know, Morgan, Jerry, all the older guys in our room, they're always emphasizing, like, man, you don't take nothing from nobody. And so whether it was against the Cowboys or in practice or, you know, whether against our offense, and it, it's all out of respect, though. You know, you never want to go out to practice and, and you know, I'm going to fight you. I'm going to swing on you the first chance I get. No, it's not about that. But, you know, you want to develop a physical mindset. And, and you know, Coach Daly emphasized it, you know, with the rest of the defensive coaches that, you know, we got to be the most physically dominant team out there. And then you kind of mm -hmm. see it from the first snap of team to, you know, the last play in practice. Hey, so because you're not Aaron Donald, would you get kicked out of practice <laughs> for swinging two helmets at an offensive lineman? <laughs> I, I'd get kicked out of practice for, you know, squirting water on Justin Herbert. <laughs> 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 I, uh, like, we ran across the field the other day, and, and you know, the D-line, we always do our, our individual on the opposite side of the field. And, um, you know, I'm running, and, uh, like, the offense, we're getting ready to do the team, so we run across to the other sideline. And the offense is getting ready to huddle, and I'm, like, you know, running through their huddle trying to, like, you know, be petty and break it up and push everybody. <laughs> and, like, you know, I can't remember one of the old linemen said, you know, don't ever do that S-H-I-T again, <laughs> you know. Oh. And it was all jokingly so, but, you know, yeah, all yeah. Like Keenan, like, he pushed me out the huddle, and <laughs> but it was all fun and game. Man, you just kind of do petty stuff like that to get everybody's morale up. Love it, love it. We'll get some, uh, some rapid-fire questions here to uh, kind of wrap it up here. Um, Aiden Murphy wants to know who's your favorite offensive lineman to go against. This can include <sighs> players around the league or just players on the Chargers, I think. So uh, either way there. Oh, wow. That's a good one. Um, favorite. It's it's not really my favorite, but I, I kind of just I, I hate going against them um, because I know I got to bring my A game. But, you know, definitely Corey. Mm. Um, Corey's probably got one of the strongest grips I've ever felt. Um, oh, okay. From another person, another human being. Um, I consider myself a pretty strong guy, and you know, when I put my hands on people, I, I can kind of, you know, determine or like, okay, you know, I can kind of power this guy today. Um, I can kind of have my way with him. But when I'm with Corey, and like the guy doesn't wear a glove when he plays, so he's just got his fingers taped, and you know, he nice. just looks rugged in his stance. <laughs> I'm looking at myself. I'm like, all right, man, let's go. You got to be on point. You know, if not, he's going to, you know, eject you five yards down the field on a double team. So um, <laughs> definitely Corey. Uh, Matt's another one. You know, Matt's just a, a huge, mm -hmm. a huge human being. I joke around with him. I said, you should be like a Viking on Game of Thrones or something like that. You know, <laughs> that's what he's that's what he's built like. Yeah, Joey was on Game of Thrones. Yeah. He was. He was. Joey also said that Corey has the strongest hands that he's played against, too. So, yeah. Back in their days from uh, Ohio State. Ohio State. Mm -hmm. uh, this is kind of a joke on the show. A lot of people have said this. Uh, so, I'm going to ask <laughs> you this. Do you think that I look like Kyle Vinoy at all? Def definitely a doppelganger for sure. Uh, <laughs> in, in, the, in the sunken place, you are definitely Kyle's twin. There we go. All right. I will uh, I will accept my fate there then I guess yeah, officially somebody <laughs> who knows both of us uh we'll we'll take that one. Um, it's a Utah thing. <laughs> it must be, must be. Um I don't know I don't know if you saw any other questions Tyler but uh we'll wrap it up here if you did not. All right, last one then from Jacob Weber, best player to come out of Hawaii. Mm. Oh, that's a oh wow. Is that a touchy one? That's a great one? question. That's okay. that's that's a fool because you know what? There's a there's a lot of great players that never really made it to college mm. um that you guys probably would have never heard about um i think for me um especially as like a young freshman in high school getting to see marcus Mariota play mm. um mm -hmm. was just like man i just remember his senior year nobody could touch him uh, i was talking with sebastian and austin the other day during stretch and they were like we we're talking because you know austin played in tennessee he played with marcus so mm. You know, oh, yeah. he, you know, he's got a lot of respect for him. He knows him very well. And he was like, man, how was Marcus in high school? I was like, bro, he was like the flash. I mean, he was a blur. Nobody <laughs> could touch him. And it's crazy that Hawaii did not offer him. 
Um, mm. But getting to watch him play, um, wow. I think another one, um, probably like one that just kind of like just changed the game was um, a young, a, a smaller safety by the name of Kabe Johnson um, out of Kahuku. Mm. Um, ended up playing at New Mexico State. Uh, career was, you know, cut short due to injury, medically mm. retired. Um, but you know, Hawaii Hawaii football used to call him the uh, the the Sly Mongoose. It was his Hawaii terms for the honey badger. Okay, um, Tyron Matthew. Yeah. Uh, but you there talk you about like a like a cool, just smooth overall player. Um, you know, he was smooth. He played offense. He played defense. He played quarterback. You know, just kind of one of those things where he got everything done for his school, and you know, ultimately it led him to a few state championships. And uh, those two guys were probably some of the best players that I seen you know play high school football in hawaii yeah you know it's just such a a hotbed for talent that i i think people don't really mm. realize i mean you, you talk about just like the one little strip of laie where you have manti alohi mm. bradley and i who went to utah <laughs> place for the jets right now um mm-hmm. just a, a crazy little hotbed of uh talent manti manti was another one man um you know i was a kid manti was was you know my my older brother's class so you know when i was a kid i, I kind of remember a little bit watching him play but i kind of don't you know when you're a kid you you know you have a lot of things going on and, and at that time i wasn't really interested in football um but you know getting to you know watch the documentary and kind of see everything resurface again of, of his high school days uh kind of made me realize i was like man hawaii high school football was special um mm. you know the, the amount of talent that came out and and to see all the guys that produced and, you know, even right after Manti, you look at, you know, that Punahou class where, you know, they had DeForest Buckner, um, oh, yeah. Fairburn, you know, kicker for the, mm. the Texans mm-hmm. was on that team. So um, they've had some pretty good NFL talent come out of Hawaii in the past few years, past few decades, I should say. There we go. All right. Final question here. Uh, somehow with a Q&A, we always end up on our, this is yeah. not a specific food question. Uh, <laughs> if somebody's going to Honolulu, where should they visit? Where should they go eat? Okay. So if it's your first time, I think the best place to stay is in Waikiki. Um, downtown Waikiki, it's it's Little Vegas, um, minus the casinos. You know, you're going to have your shops. You're going to have your, your Waikiki Strip where there's entertainment at night. Um, there's a bunch of luau's along the strip. And then you're right by the beach. So that's kind of like the first touristy attraction uh, you, you should do when you get there is, is stay in Waikiki. Um, if you're a returning Hawaii guest and you want to get back to Honolulu, I recommend staying in the North Shore. Um, maybe Turtle Bay, or you can down, stay down the west side of the islands at, at, at the Disney Aulani or or the Four Seasons down there on, on, on west Oahu. And then, you know, definitely go check out the Polynesian Culture Center. Um, Chiefs Luau, these are, you know, some of the great things that if you want to get more in touch about, you know, the Hawaiian culture, the Polynesian culture, I think these are really good things you or are really good attractions that you should get to see. There we go. Can definitely vouch for that. Uh, stayed in Turtle Bay a couple of times mm-hmm. myself. Is a fantastic area. So, mm-hmm. uh, Braden, appreciate the time, man. We, we uh, had a great conversation last time. Had a great conversation this time. You know, uh, most players that we get on the show, we get for like 15 minutes. You've done uh, 40 <laughs> minutes plus each time. So, really appreciate it. Uh, obviously, wish you nothing but the best this season. Hope you stay healthy. Win a lot of football games and uh, have a great season overall. Appreciate it. Thank you, fellas, for having me.